Mailbag time, got a bunch of things here. Let's get stuck into it, see what we got. Now if you excuse the mess, I've got a project going on right here, which I'm halfway through doing. And I'm a bit cramped for space. So these are relays. Oh, and they're upside down. I'm not sure what happens with the electrons. No upside down, I don't know, yes I was Dave. HFD 4 slash 3 hyphen S. These are low voltage relays. I think these are 5 volt relays. Or it could be 4 volt relays, I can't remember now. But service mount I think. Yeah, they are service mount relays. So it's a little project I was working on. I actually didn't have any small relays I wanted to use. Nothing of the suitable voltage. We've got some of these. 20 of them. There'll be links for these bland below. I think these are adjustable boost regulators. That's what they're like. These are only low current, I think like one amp or something like that. They're not really particularly beefy things. That's fine. Sometimes you just need a small power supply which you can boost up. So I actually use these on a mailbox which I designed basically. A mailbox, it sounds weird, doesn't it? But I've got a sense on my mailbox, so if the mailbox is opened, it turns on a ESP32 and that's connected to my Wi-Fi network and it sends me a email saying, hey, the mailbox has been opened. So when I get mail, like this, it tells me. So I get all excited, like Christmas. Voltage in, like from a battery, five volts out, whatever you want to set it to. It worked pretty well. These are some more micro switches. I just did show some in the mask mailbag, I think it was. But these ones are little rounded lever type and some longer lever type and some roller type I think I've gone a bit overboard so this project for the mailbox I needed a micro switch to activate on the door of the mailbox right because you open the mailbox door it needs a switch on there so I actually use a micro switch for that and I realized I didn't really have any left I only had a couple and I bought some and I bought some more I've got plenty of micro switches now. It took me 20 years to use the last two. But when you need a micro switch, you need a micro switch. You know, they have their uses. They're cheap, reliable, doesn't take much pressure to activate them. Anyway, what's this thing? It's got a red dot on it. I wonder what red dot means. Does that mean 40? <laughs> Digital level box. Ah, I saw someone else have one of these. Was it Julian Elet? 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 I don't know. I think it's Elet, isn't it? I think he had one. I think it was him. I think these are magnetic. Yes they are. Look. So you put this on a surface and it gives you a level. This it does when you've got batteries in it. it takes two triple A's looks of it. You've got zeroing as well so you can put it on a surface you know it's definitely flat. You can zero it. Yeah I thought it would be a nice little thing to play around with. But it's pretty accurate. So I put some batteries in it see if it turns on. It does. See backlit, that's nice. My desk appears to be a bit wonky. Didn't think it's quite that wonky. So you can hold a reading, apparently. You can do a zero based on what you think is a level level. Level level, you know what I mean? <laughs> and go from that, yeah. Okay, well. Sure it'll be useful. Next time I put the shelf up. What the is this? Oh, I don't know what this is now. Right. So I've been playing with my car's air conditioning system because it's been misbehaving. I've been doing a few things with it and I bought a gauge set but there's different gauge sets you can get and some have what's called a stowing terminal on them some don't mine don't and um, I've also got some other stuff which has connections which are screwed together which is what these are screw connections and I don't actually have a way of just like closing the hoses off to keep them um, 
clean, I suppose. You know, you don't you don't have open the atmosphere for sitting around for you know a year or two between uses. So I thought I'd get one of these things, which is this little valve, which means I can screw the hoses onto this, and it'll just keep it you know a closed circuit and uh, mean that don't get any dust and stuff get into the actual hoses and fittings and what have you. So yeah, that'd be quite nice. One of those. I think I do need to get a second type as well, but this will be a good starting point. I've done a video on the car, so you'll see that at some point. I haven't edited it yet, I'm still finishing it, I haven't actually finished it yet, but I've got some stuff in progress. I want to take a minute to thank my Patreon and membership supporters, people who help to donate to the channel and help me to buy things from RBA. Like these items have been basically sponsored by those people, so I can actually do it. Excellent, I've been waiting for these. Um, these are some more lawn modules. So these are... E32's 900T20D, that's what they look like. I've shown these previously in other mailbags and all these different variants of these as well. I've had the 868T20D and the 915T20D and the 433T20D and stuff like that, just different frequencies. So these are 900s, we actually cover two bands. I did mention that previously when I showed these in another mailbag. So 900 means it covers the 868 and the 915 frequencies despite the programming on these. There's a nice option. The 868 and the 915 are both discontinued. So this is the replacement for this. Basically what I'm going to be doing is um, replacing some of the 868 modules I've got with these ones. And that allows me to then adjust what frequencies are running on between which band it happens to be on. Sometimes certain bands are better than others depending on what situations you're in. And having one which can cover both bands is good. I think my knife sharpening again. Show these in I think the last mailbag was it as well. This from rubber keyboards. Now this is a different style. The one I showed before was dual colour. This is single colour, which is basically the same as what I've got in existing setups. The gear I've already got built and using the keyboards exactly the same as this one. And the last mailbag I showed the dual colour ones which had the outline and slightly differentiated buttons, which I thought was nicer. I know this keyboard definitely works, this type, this exact model works. Um, it's just in case there's a difference between the programming inside the electronics in here with this one compared to the other ones which I purchased, which, although they look nicer, they may not actually work. Because sometimes it may matter, and they might work a slightly different way. Of course, the benefit of having rubber keyboards means they're basically weatherproof. These get used outdoors and rain and all sorts of stuff. The ones I've had so far have been really good. I mean, they get wet, they get soaked, I mean, they're out in rain, getting absolutely saturated, and they've been okay, they haven't had any problems. Apart from what I think is maybe a bit of key wear, the, the enter button seems to be getting a bit troublesome in one or two of them. So I think they may be wearing out. I've had those for a few years now, so it's not too surprising, they do get a bit of use. Check out the videos down below for other things I do. Subscribe link over there if you're not already subscribed. Put a link over there if you want to donate to the channel and help me to buy things from our bag or just test equipment effects, that kind of thing. Get you later.